I am indeed here with Polly Fagan. Hello, how are you? Thanks very much for coming in to us today. No problem, it's my pleasure. Did you have far to travel? Uh, not really. 40 minutes up the dual carriageway or whatever. Oh, not too bad. You didn't break down this time? No, I didn't. I didn't, <laughs> thank God. I'll just let the listeners know, last time we were talking to Polly, he had a bit of car trouble. Yeah, I, I blew a piston in the engine on the way up, so I kind of got stranded on the side of the road. But I still done the interview. You did, and that's the main thing. That's yeah. the main thing. <laughs> and that would have been, that was the start of June we figured out, did we? Yeah, or? I think it was in June, early June sometime, yeah. I and was, you were just back from Canada? <laughs> yes, I was just back from Canada, and uh, I was supposed to be going back but uh, I didn't because I'm recording an album here. So Very good. And yeah. how did you... We may as well start from the very start. How did you get into playing music and everything else? Well, I always played music um, from an early age. I, I was in the National Foresters Band and I played the cornet, which is a brass instrument, and that's what really kicked the music off. So I... God, I was kind of... I sang in choirs and i done bits and pieces with the schools and all that sort of stuff. And then... I started playing the guitar when I was about 18 or 19 and I kind of I was a bit private about it. I wouldn't play. Didn't tell anyone. I didn't I didn't play in front of anybody really and then um I started writing songs privately as well and then one night I had a few cans inside me at a house <laughs> party and I started playing and uh a lot of my friends and uh family and everything they were fairly surprised so cool. um it takes a lot of guts to sing in one of your own songs in front of people for the first time, I'd say. Yeah, but the more you do it, you get used <laughs> get to it. Get used you know to what it, I mean? yeah. Like, absolutely. it's grand. It's not, I, I actually quite enjoy it now. Mm. Actually, I love it. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, after that, then, uh, like, I, I worked at Port Marnock uh, Hotel and Golf Links for many years and uh, under under uh, Fintan Brennan, and uh, he actually encouraged me a lot whenever we went away on working kind of holiday slash you know, uh, networking uh, things. I would sing in the bars or whatever, and um, I just decided to go travelling uh, there last year and went to Canada. And was that music related? Did you say like, or was that no, just no? No, that was. I actually just went to go. I wanted to go looking for work over there. I just wanted to change the scenery, and I um, didn't get my work permit, so I bought the. I had eight hundred euro. Uh, to my name wow. and I bought a guitar and I started busking and I made nothing well I made a few quid for the first couple of weeks but then I actually started making some quality money like yeah. and then uh, I started getting a kind of crowd of people coming around following me going to different places and I started gigging and stuff like that and I was really lucky uh, and a very influential person kind of picked me up uh, one night I was playing outside a bar and uh, he asked me if I knew who he was and I says no but you have an English accent so I started slagging him and it turned out that he was uh, one of the directors of the largest chain of radio stations in Canada Wow! and the next day he brought me to uh, a place called Emac which is a top recording studio over there and uh, the rest, rest is all is history, history. Yeah. <laughs> I think Canada is a great place isn't it for music industry and yeah, that big kind time, of thing especially a lot of people go over to kind of record albums and that kind of thing yeah well Toronto would be a massively arty, like arty city like yeah. uh, it would be the equivalent to Berlin a lot of people Europe. say actually, yeah, that like it's it's all about gigs. It's not about going to clubs. Like it's all yeah, it's there's gigs. just loads of gigs every night. Yeah. yeah, people are more into going out seeing like original music and stuff mm. like that. Whereas over here, it's like cover bands. You see so many cover bands, which I think are great as well, and they're very entertaining. But it's I, like the only way they can a lot of them can make money as well. Like, but I know Canada must just be more. Well, no, I'm starting to, to make a few quid over here. Now. Well, yeah, like obviously for the, you know, the yeah. select few. Like, Well, I my advice to any musician out there uh, who's listening in is um, stick to your own stuff and be original. Uh, Just keep persistent. Anybody can sing anybody else's song. That's mm. easy. Yeah. All you have to do is go on to Cordy.com or anything on the internet and just print off somebody else's song. But Absolutely, what yeah. What makes it different is actually sitting down and using your own mind and using your own artistic ability to be able to actually put something on paper and come up with a concept. You just have to be persistent with it, really, don't you? Absolutely, not give yeah. up at all. Never yeah. Up, yeah. Um, do you have a genre that you put yourself in at all, or uh, ma- major influences or anything? Major influences. I'm mad into Pink Floyd, and you know, Thin Lizzy, kind of Queen, all that type of stuff. Really classic rock. I'm really into yeah. that. Um, I don't really put myself into any genre because um, the style of songs that I write, they they 
vary big time like um, I could do one song that's very slow and it could be a, a slow waltz or something like that and the next song could be like a very upbeat fast rocking song like mm. so it's just it's, I just keep writing songs and whatever comes out comes out so like people I get that question a lot and I can never answer it a lot of bands find it hard to, and singers find it hard for themselves yeah. in a genre like yeah. Um, but yeah that's cool you kind of mix it up a bit <laughs> yeah, well, I don't even mean to. It's not intentional, or anything. it's just that's just the way it comes out. Like, yeah. Oh, that's a good way to be. Yeah. Um, do you want to play your first track for us? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will probably start. I'll play Freight Train, and Very I wrote good. this song um, over in Canada. And at the time, I was absolutely broke, and I was worried about my visa, and um, I had a lot of worries that the, I didn't want to come home, mm. and. I just, over there, there's these big, huge freight trains. They're like a mile long and they've got like hundreds of carriages on them. Like, And most of the time, half of the carriages are empty. And I was sitting on the bus at the traffic lights and it takes like half an hour for a train to pass. And I just said to myself, I'd love to be able to offload all my worries and cares and just let it, just throw it into one of them carriages and just let it go down the track and never Aww. see it again, never yeah. let it come back. So that's what I wrote this song about. So Very it's good. called Freight Train. Great, take it away. Fill you up, 
happy you can take it down the line But don't you ever bring it back And don't you ever bring it back And don't you ever bring it back And don't you ever bring it Don't you ever bring it back. And I'm back here with Polly Fagan, who just sang Freight Train for us. Very good. Thank you very much. I was just saying, you had me sing along there at the end. That was one of those choruses that you kind of can't help but sing along with. And that's what I want. Um, and I love the story behind it as well. I like a song with a good... Good Cheers. backstory to it. Um, Gig-wise, what have you been doing in Ireland uh, since you've come back? Uh... Everything. Really? <laughs> I've been busy. busy Sounds like you've been bee. doing an awful lot now, in fairness. Busy little bee. Uh, i done... God, i done loads. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> trying to remember everything. Uh, Just, I, like, what kind of places have you been oh, doing? Oh, I've, like, I've been doing, like, pubs. I've been doing um, theatres. Uh, I've been doing festivals. Mm-hmm. Um, small festivals. Like, yeah. Um, just kind of bits and pieces, like, but a lot of bits and pieces. Um, down, all over the country, like, mm. everywhere. And so. do you have a favourite venue at all that you've played so uh, far? The f- my favourite venue so far would have to be um, the TLT in Drogheda. Cool. Uh, uh, just for any particular reason? It's just a fantastic uh, uh, kind of concert hall. It's a theatre, really. It's It's built purpose like that's exactly what it's for for musicians and plays and stuff like that the acoustics mm. are perfect the seating uh, no matter where you're sitting you can always see the stage the stage is huge there's big massive uh, green room down the back at, at backstage and it's just really cool like it's great and did you play there more than once or did you just no I just time? I played there uh, last Tuesday night oh very uh, good oh, really a, recently. it was a reunion of uh, all the top bands of uh, the 60s and 70s, all the show bands. Cool. That toured in America and all over the UK and that. And it was a a release of a a book that a man wrote that was called uh, Play It Again, Paddy, a book release. Very good. So uh, there was a lot of legends there. Cool. Loads of legends. Met a few cool people. Yeah, yeah, it's deadly. (laughs) Like, you know, I hope I'm alive when I'm their age. Yeah. (laughs) And songwriting-wise, do you have like a... What would I call it? Like a method, like a, a way that you do it? Or I wake up in the morning and whatever mood I'm in, I I treat my, my songwriting um, like a job. Okay. I get up at eight o'clock in the morning, I have my breakfast and I start work at nine. And I'm really lucky because we have a, a really nice piano at home and uh, I've got loads of guitars and that. So I just sit in that room pretty much all day till wow. about four or five and I just write song after song. And... Uh, Sometimes I dream, like I'll wake up and I'll have dreamt a song. Mm. And if it's a song that I don't recognise, then it's obviously a song that I'm going to just about to write. And I just write it there and then. Wow. Sometimes like a couple of the songs I write like in 10 minutes, like and that's them finished, done. I'd say, yes, yeah, some days are probably easier than others. Are they? Other days I could be banging my head off the <laughs> piano for like five or six hours. And then, and then that's the day that, they're the days that you just get up and go outside and go fishing or go, go do for whatever or go yeah. for a game of golf or anything yeah. like that, you know well, that's so great that's, yeah. that's, I suppose that's the way I, I write or when I meet new people and I hear stories of our people's life stories um, you know Lady Devil is is uh, that song which is the single the, my debut single that's coming out next Tuesday um, that song was written about me walking home from a bar one night in Canada and I bumped into a prostitute, and she As asked, you do. <laughs> "Yeah, well, I didn't even know." And she uh, she asked me if I was looking if I wanted to go party, mm. and I said, "Yeah, where's the party?" <laughs> and I didn't have a clue. Me being stupid, and yeah. all. but uh, it was grand. I ended up sitting down, and I smoked a packet of cigarettes with her, and she told me her whole life story. Wow. She was born in the streets. Her mother was a cocaine addict, and so was she. And uh, she poured her heart out to me, and. The next morning, I woke up and Came I wrote with a song. Lady Devil. Amazing. So, yeah. It's always good to have yeah. a, a good muse to write a song about, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, I, I get very interested in people. Uh, you know, it's, it's 
a face doesn't tell you everything, mm. you know. Uh, and to sit down and actually really talk to somebody, um, a lot of people are very surprised that that someone will actually want to listen to their whole life story mm. or whatever. Especially or, traveling, you'd meet a lot of really interesting people. Yeah, I love traveling. I yeah. love traveling. That's 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 I suppose that's what inspires me most: seeing new things, meeting new people, you know, all that sort of stuff. Mm. Like even my own past life experiences, like you know. So yeah, you're in the story. right business anyway for traveling because it's the kind of thing you can do. Well, you I have can no do choice. Everywhere. I yeah. have no choice. <laughs> I'm over and back across the water the whole time now, but um, I'm, I'm, I love it though. I love it. Like mm. I go back to Canada on the 15th for a month and come back home then for another month. And so you actually are going to be going back and forth for a yeah, while? Like, yeah, wow. and then I go to LA in January. And God, you have loads of cool plans coming up now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big plans. Yeah, well, plans can always change. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Recording-wise, what have you have you done much? Or? Recording at the moment, well, that's the reason why I actually stayed in Ireland, okay. um, because I was uh, supposed to go back and play loads of festivals this summer in Canada, mm-hmm. but uh, Frank McNamara and myself bumped into each other, and um, obviously, I'm sure your listeners know of Frank McNamara. Well, he was the music director of um, The Late Late Show, for RTE for a long time and worked with the uh, three American tenors and he'd done an awful lot. He's very, very experienced and has his own recording studio and he offered me to record with him and I jumped at the opportunity. I cancelled all of my festivals, cancelled all of my gigs over there. Now I'm still playing plenty over here. Doing them here anyway, yeah. Yeah, but... uh, (laughs) Yeah, I'm, it's pretty much that's an ongoing thing. Myself and Frank um, are recording, and this single that's been released, it was recorded first in Emac in uh, Ontario, and when I I didn't I held it back because I I wasn't it wasn't the sound I wanted. Okay. So I held it back all this time, and I've been there's a lot of people kind of biting at my heels just to say release mm-hmm. it, release it. And I'm like, no, not a chance. I'm you like want a spoiled to be child. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, not until I'm happy with it. I don't. Of course, no, I, but you don't want to release something that you think is half. Yeah. half finished you know yeah exactly yeah. so um, it's finished now and it's going out next week very good so hopefully uh, all everyone keeps their eyes open for that for yeah absolutely yeah. Um, did you enjoy the recording process or do you enjoy being recording. in the studio I love being in the studio it's class it's like it's just loads of little toys to play yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. for a musician it's like I don't know it's just like a, a big playroom mm. you know was it a long process or did you kind of get it done and dusted um, or was it the fact that you weren't you wanted it to be really, really perfect. That it took a I while wanted longer. It to be very. I wanted it to be exactly what I wanted to hear. Mm. Um, and yeah, that single did take a good while. But we've been recording other stuff in the meanwhile. Um, but that's pretty much all. Like we've done all the scratches for the album. We know what songs are going on the album, and we're going to have the album out for September. Yeah, very good. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And when you play live, do you have a? A whole band with you, or do you do a lot of acoustics, um, like well, just yourself, solo well, stuff? Honestly, to be straight out with you, um, if I'm getting paid five hundred euro for a gig, mm. uh, I'd prefer to do it by do myself. Do it yourself, of course, yeah. because musicians have to be paid. <laughs> yeah, and um, this crack of paying musicians with pints it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't mm. cut my boat. And anybody who's doing that, who's listening to me, you're wrong and you're ruining music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, all musicians should be paid for what they do. It's a job just like anybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I'm doing a big show, if I'm getting paid good money, um, obviously I will bring in probably a 12-piece with a string section and a brass section and then a full band behind me. Um, I have my band over in Canada. They came back with me, but they couldn't stay because of their visas. Yeah, of so, course. Um, Usually, because I'm a solo singer-songwriter, I just have backing musicians. Yeah. Now, the the guys from Canada who back me, they're really, like, they're awesome and they're really good friends of mine. Um, but as I says, I write all the music myself and write all the songs, so um, I just pay them per gig. Yeah. So I suppose that's the answer to your question. That's yeah. how I do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> and do you prefer to play by yourself, do you think, or do you kind of like having a bit of a... Um, or is it just kind of what on the day, whatever suits you? I don't know. I just I do you know what I love playing to a crowd that listen. And it's when it's your own music as well, I guess. It's I don't always, play anybody else's yeah, music. Yeah, so it always you always yeah. enjoy it. I do do covers, mm. but very seldom. Like not not really. Like you know, if you do, you make them fully your own. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I don't like doing covers really. I I the only reason I do them is because. Uh, a lot of people like to hear different songs. One like, or you two, know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, very good. Do you want to play your next song for us? No, I don't. I'm <laughs> okay. only joking, yeah. Um, <laughs> of course. Um, any story behind this one? Uh, this story song one. is called Never Wanna Let You Go and it's one of the slower songs off the album and um, 
I wrote this song pretty much about, I was in a kind of a, a funny kind of relationship with a doctor over in Canada and uh, both of us really liked each other but because of the job that I have and the hours that I keep, um, it just couldn't work and uh, we were arguing a lot and, you know, didn't want to let her go but I had to. Aww. So and yeah, but we're still very good friends, and that it's just, just our hours and all yeah. that. But the whole thing is about being a musician. How hard it is to actually have a relationship with somebody. Uh, well, especially when you're touring and stuff like that, it's it's next to impossible. I'm sure a lot of the singers listening can relate. So <laughs> our musicians yeah. can relate. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is called "Never Wanna Let You Go." She stormed out on me Don't know where to look Why do we keep arguing? You say that you love me But why all the jealousy? Can't do this anymore You're ripping me into tiny shreds My heart is working against my soul The show is ending I think it's time to go Oh, I hate the way this has gone She cooks me dinner She even washes my clothes While I go out And play my stupid shows And I expect her not to care Even when I'm somewhere elsewhere Oh, she just wants me home Wants me home Alone with her, I never want to let you go. My heart is working against my soul. The show is ending, I think it's time to go. Oh, I hate. The way this has gone Now after all the fighting I hold her in my arms She's still crying This is not the way it's meant to be Oh damn it girl You're the death of me I never want to let you go Heart is working against my soul. The show is ending. I think it's time to go. Oh, I hate the way this has gone. Very good, beautiful. That Thank was you. gorgeous. Really, Cheers. really nice. Yeah, I had a little tear. I know, yeah, I see <laughs> it, it in your eyes. It was, there. that was see lovely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that was really lovely. Fair play to you. Thanks. Uh, now, usually, in the, in the, when that's recorded on the album, there's a lot of instrumentation and it's solos throughout or whatever. Do you add a lot of kind of your saying brass and stuff to yes. your. Like, is there a lot of that on the album as yeah, well? Yeah, there's brass and there's strings. And do there's, you play your cornet at all? I do, yeah. 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 Um, I'm actually playing in the Palace, uh, supporting a 12 piece who are supporting me at Tower Rocks this year. And I'm supporting Damien Dempsey and the Bogey Boys and a few great acts that weekend. Very good. But um, uh, yeah, I still, I, I, I kind of throw in as much as I feel is necessary to make uh, the point come across. Mm. 
So that song there, there's going to be a harmonica solo in it because yeah. it's a sad song, um, but it's a, it's a real song and it's it's the reality of love. And that's just the way it is. Yeah, very good. Um, here at the Near Pem Sessions, just go on a lighter note because <laughs> I'm going to start crying. So, anyway, <laughs> right, go on. At the Near Pem Sessions, we do a little round called Cheesy Questions. I don't okay. know if you've heard about it at all. No. But um, so I'm just going gonna, gonna to hit them with you and see if you can give me some good answers. <laughs> right, okay. So, the first question is if you were stranded on a desert island with only one album. What would it be and why? Yeah, you have a little MP3 player, only holds one album. Dark Side of the Moon. Grand. <laughs> Any particular reason? Just love the band? Because it's class. Yeah. It's serious music. Um, it's it's an album that you can actually listen to start to finish. And in my opinion, the boys from Pink Floyd were absolute geniuses. And is it one of those things that you can still go back to and never get sick of? I Some, some nights when I can't sleep, when there's a lot of things going through my head, uh, like last night, uh, because we were finishing the song today, um, or the the single today, and and I was just thinking about what I had to do and all the different things that has to be done in order to get a single and get it uh, get some music out for mm. people to hear. Uh, I just turn on my Pink Floyd and lie there, and all of a sudden I go to sleep. <laughs> Very good. It's it is one of those albums, isn't it? Yeah. And it lets you off into a a nice deep sleep. Yeah. Um. The next one is if you could tour with any band. Can't be Pink Floyd now because you already use them. Um, who would it be? Old to tour. It'd be no crack. <laughs> it can be like you can go with them back in the day. Either. They can be alive, dead. Uh, okay. Um, let me see. And it can be just because you like their music, or because you think the tour would be mad. Or um, God, that is that is a tricky, cheesy question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd love to go on tour with. Um, Rory Gallagher, if he was still alive. Oh, very good. Yeah. Just because he's choice. a legend. Yeah, can't and beat him. And he's an unbelievable guitarist, and I'm sure he'd teach me loads of stuff. Absolutely. And he was mad. And he was mental, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, and do you have any embarrassing songs on your your iPod or your, your iTunes? Of mine? No, no, oh. no, just in general. No. That you'd care to admit to? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I don't. I don't like crap music. Uh, <laughs> crap music is crap, and that's that's that. But my opinion is is... Not uh, the be all and end all. That's just my taste. Um, no, I I don't. If if I had a crap song on, song on my iPod, it would get deleted straight away. Yeah, yeah. you want to keep the best on it. Yeah, because I like shuffling. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. So you want to to like every single song like as well? Well, I li- I listen to absolutely every type of music, mm. um, whether it's R and B, dance, uh, anything like, uh, and if the person who produced it and uh, you know, wrote it. Uh, if they, you can tell the quality straight away. Like, mm. you know, um, I love the Chemical Brothers. Like, I think they're great. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Dead Mouse. I even like. I love Dead Mouse. As yeah. well. I, there's loads of different genres that I like, but um, yeah, like, what's the? It's, a, it's actually that's a that's a funny question to ask because like, why would anybody put a song that they thought was crap onto their iPod? We always get an answer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have stuff on from like when they were kids and stuff, you know. So yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> but you're just you're too cool for it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> ah, no, I know. I won't even Um So final plugs. What have you got coming up in the uh, near future? In the very near future, I have the single coming out this week, uh, "Lady Devil." I'm going to play an acoustic version of it now in a minute. And that's next Tuesday. That's Did next say, Tuesday, yeah. yeah. And um, then. This weekend, on Friday, tomorrow night, I'm judging Battle of the Bands in Taranaree, and that's for uh, the, that's the final of the Battle of the Bands for Tara Rocks, and that will win. The winner will get to support Damien Dempsey. It's a brilliant on prize, today. isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's great class. prize. And then I have to play after the competition is done. And then on, I don't think I have to do anything on Saturday, but I'm playing La Cala on Sunday, which is a festival down in Oldcastle. And then on Monday night, I'm playing in the Palace. Uh, now, I'm not actually singing. I'm just playing trumpet for a friend of mine, a musical friend of mine. Very good. And just getting him out of a hobble. And then the next while after that, uh, well, Tower Rocks is on the 25th of August. I'm really looking forward to that because I have a 12-piece and we're rehearsing already for it. Oh, that'd be great. So that's going to be fun. Um, 
then there's there's all other bits and bobs that I just can't remember. At the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have Sorry. like an active Facebook or a website oh, yeah. that people can look at? Yeah, um, if you look me up on polyfagan.com, you can go there and you'll be able to buy uh, the single next Tuesday on that. Um, you can see all my up and coming events and places that I'm going to be playing. And uh, my Facebook page is Polly Fagan Official, and that's Polly with a Y, not an IE. Um, and I suppose that's really all you really need to know. You can see me, I'm on Twitter as well. Same again, Polly Fagan. <laughs> um, but yeah, add me on Facebook and because um, I always test out my new songs on Facebook and I just put People them are very up. very honest on I put, Facebook. Yeah, I know, it's brilliant. <laughs> I, I just put them up for a day or two and I see what the reaction is and if it's a bad reaction, then I just don't, that song doesn't It's such it. a great tool for musicians now, isn't it? Yeah, Facebook and all that yeah, kind of thing. It's yeah, class. it's brilliant. Uh, well, thanks very much for coming in to us. Oh, thank you it very great much to for have having you. me. Um, do you want to play us out with your final tune? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, this is called Lady Devil and I hope I don't break a string. Because I usually do playing this song. Oh god. Um, but anyway. Prepare ourselves. <laughs> this is called Lady Devil. Um, Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. No problem at all. Okay. She was born with a cold, cold. Cause she's a lady, yeah, she's a lady, the devil She's got dark skin and long, long, long legs She never had any trouble with the man Oh, she'll make love to you Cause she knows you're a fool She'll take every dime It's a perfect crown Oh yes it is Cause she's a lady She's a lady A devil Cause she's a lady Yeah She's a lady A devil I tell you one thing, yeah, don't want to bump into disdain. She's put every man she's had to shame. Oh, cause it's all a game, yeah, it's all a game. To her she'll play you again, again and again. Oh, yeah, she will. She's a lady, yeah, she's a lady, a devil Cause she's a lady, yeah, she's a lady, a devil Cause she's a lady, yeah, she's a lady